Hi and welcome to another episode and what we've got here is is the Commodore 128 part 1 because I am going to do part 2's but not week after week after week like I've done with the Spectrum because basically I'm waiting for bits but anyway the Commodore 128 is obviously the big brother to the Commodore 64 which plenty of people know lots of things about far more than I do yes this is a little bit yellow but meh Hopefully a nice bit of sun this year, maybe do a bit of retro brighting, manage try that this year with all the different bits I've got that could do with it. But I purchased this, oh dear me, this is a brick and I'm pulling wires everywhere, is from the Commodore Retro Store. This was purchased from them and boy did they do a good job of things. They uh, recapped the Commodore and the PSU and actually sent the caps that they took out to prove that they have put stuff in without having to open it up and ruin the one month warranty that you get with this so basically you know as long as you pack it up well and everything and if you're not particularly happy with it but i have no reason not to be happy with this as it seems because basically i have done a little bit of testing already um you can see cable sticking out the back everywhere it's got the standard power switch, reset button, joystick ports, power port, which is a square one, which is interesting. Just take that out. There we go. A square one. Looks kind of like the Amiga one. In fact, it looks a lot like the Amiga one, but it's not the Amiga one. So don't try using it because something is not going to feel nice at the end of it. And it's probably going to be your wallet trying to fix everything up. But anyway, um, at the back, it's got the standard Commodore 64 ports, but one extra. It's got the RGB I, which is a bit like a CGA port, from what I understand, on a um, PC. Um, you know, sort of the TTL sort of signals. Um, it's got a normal serial cable dangling out. I've got the the uh, the S video type cable sticking out at the back there. And you're probably wondering why I've got both of them plugged in because the Commodore 128 has, even says it on a key here, 40 columns and 80 columns. And it boots up to 40 columns, um, but you can mess around and also shove it to be in, into the Commodore 64 mode so that you can load your Commodore 64 games. It's also got some slots inside so you can put extra chips in. This one happens to have Servant in it. Um, came with it. I don't know very much about it apart from it's sort of a thing that starts up the beginning and helps using this machine a little bit easier. Um, but the one thing I do want to show you with this is obviously I have my cables is this which is a Commodore 128 or a C128 to SCART. So we've got different ports. There's a 5 volt in or out depending on what mode you've got it set to. I've currently got it set to working with the Commodore 128 but it can be used to do a CGA converter as well. Um, well let's get the cables plugged in. Now this was purchased from what was his name again? Tylo, Tylo Detling and I'll put the links in the description down below of where to get in touch with him and his his video that's going to explain this box of tricks miles more than I could do since he's the one that designed it. Um, but the idea of this is that it converts the RGBI into something that a modern monitor or capture device type converter thing is going to understand better. But it passes the normal S video signal or composite signal through directly through to the SCART so it doesn't actually convert up to RGB now I've tested it on a device that looks like this because it wouldn't work on an OSSC because the OSSC doesn't handle um, S-Video but that box of tricks does so the reason that's why I'm using one of these so-called cheaper devices I'd really love to have a device that converted it all up to RGB um, so that I could use it with my OSSC, all these different acronyms. But um, yes, I've got a huge 
spaghetti of cables now but let's get it turned on and see what picture we can get so at first you get a green dot from here and you should be seeing the same in a moment so let me click everything across there we go so this is the start of the Commodore 128 because I have the servant version 1.84 installed and as you can see it gives me a bit of a menu so I can jump around doing different things now there's not really much I can show you because I don't have anything set up right now to load up on the 128 um, because I don't have a floppy disk drive or anything like that to get going um, I do have a tape deck but I don't have anything on tape to show you but we'll do that in a later episode. For now, we're just showing off this box of tricks, really. So we've got a nice green light to show that we're doing um, 40 columns. So let's press the button on here. And you might see on the screen right now, if I press the minus button, it'll swap between 40 and 80 columns. But I can also do that, uh, press this key, which swaps between the two. But you seem to have to reset to do that. So I'll press the minus button for now. And then I'll press the button that's on the side of here. And that's what the picture looks like in 80 columns. Okay, no real big thing to show you right now, as I say. But the reason why I'm interested in the Commodore 128 is because, well, mainly because I was wanting to know what the 128K games are like on here. Um, I came to realize there isn't that many that are and even then what they really do is just play the music in the background as as long with the sound effects whereas the Commodore 64 you might have to pick between the two if it gave you that option really can't forget that the fact that my wife has bought me all of this for my birthday that's coming up soon um, well, mainly because I hinted at it quite strongly <laughs> uh, for some time like I always do with different gadgets and I'm sure you've got to used to watching the videos by now so that she does like to get me these sort of things um, for my Christmas and birthday and anniversaries and stuff like that. But anyway, let's go back to this device. So we've got the blue light for the 80 columns. And as I was saying before, was the reason why I'm interested with this is I would like to be able to try out the BBS stuff on here because the Commodore 64 is a fun machine to use on BBSs in 64 sort of 64k mode as in 40 column mode and from what I can see it's very good at doing the 80 column as well because it can do the PC type ASCII art and stuff like that so that's what I would like this for in the long run I want it to be my BBS sort of machine um, so let's go back um, to 40 columns by pressing minus again and then pressing this button and we go I know the picture isn't so great um, but that's because I do want to put um, other things inside here um, I'd like to get hold of a Lumafix 128 which will help get rid of the jail bars they're not that bad really on here sometimes um, sometimes they show up pretty bad as in when I go to the Commodore 64 mode and it boots across to there as you can see, jail bars are a bit annoying. Um, that should be able to be fixed with LumaFix. There's another mod that changes uh, the amount of memory that the VDC has, which supposedly comes in handy when you're using GeOS and things like that. But that's all going to be for a later episode. And if you can think of anything else I might want to throw into this or other things to be added to it on the outside even, let me know because I really don't know very much about this machine. I'm learning um, just a little bit right now because as I say, uh, well, I didn't actually say that today. What I want to say is that I'm not going to get to play with this properly until it is my birthday. So, and I've got a bit more cash to buy other bits and pieces. So, I hope that's been of some interest <laughs> for you right now. I know it's a bit of a quick blast into episode one of here and it's sort of like woohoo I've got one um, but it's also to sort of put a, a cry out for help on fun stuff I can actually do with this so 
please let me know because it'd be nice to be able to get that going for when it is my birthday. I hope it was of some interest for now. As always, happy gaming.